Mammoths include a number of extinct elephant-related species that once roamed the Earth. They are most closely related to today's Asian elephants rather than African elephants. They looked similar to other proboscideans. They had long trunks and long, curved tusks. Whilst some species were exceptionally large, standing at 13 feet or 4 meters at the shoulder and weighing over 12 tons, most were smaller and a similar size to today's Asian elephants. The oldest known species is considered to be the South African mammoth, whose fossils date back 5 million years ago, during the early Pliocene. They were common in southern and eastern Africa. From there, mammoths migrated northwards, evolving into other species of the mammoth as they did so. Fossil evidence suggests that southern mammoths gave rise to steppe mammoths in Asia around 1.7 million years ago. Then, much more recently, steppe mammoths gave rise to the woolly mammoth. These species dispersed out of Asia, into Europe, and North America. The mammoths crossed over into North America via the Bering Land Bridge approximately one and a half million years ago. From there, the American mammoths evolved into the Columbian, Jefferson's, and the Channel Islands pygmy mammoths. But more recent DNA evidence disputes the simplicity of this timeline suggesting there was more of an overlap between species. It is likely with more and more scientific analysis of these incredible animals, our understanding will broaden and their historic story will change over time. What we do know is that these large herbivores were well adapted to the climate of the Pleistocene. These adaptations may not be suitable for today's climate, more on that in a moment. The mammoths that inhabited more northern regions developed long fur to cope with the cold. The most famous of these was the woolly mammoth. These giants evolved several adaptations for surviving temperatures as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius or minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. They developed a thick layer of subcutaneous fat to keep them warm. Their ears and tails were reduced in size to minimize heat loss, and they grew large humps of fat above their necks which acted as both a heat source and an energy source. Mammoths were a common sight across the globe during the Pleistocene, but could they survive today? To answer this question, we need to compare the environment in which the mammoths thrived to the environment they would find themselves today. We can look at their habitat and diet, as well as the global climate during the Pleistocene. We also need to consider the competition mammoths were subjected to and whether the same competition exists today. Firstly, let's look at the mammoth's habitat. During the Pleistocene, there were large areas of Eurasia covered in steppe tundra. This was where the woolly mammoths lived. It spread across the northern hemisphere from east to west, reaching as far south as Spain. The mammoths fed on the grasses, sedges, and shrubs that covered the steppe. In North America, the woolly mammoths inhabited this type of tundra as well, but there is fossil evidence that mammoths also inhabited forested regions in America's Midwest. Today, the mammoth steppe no longer exists. Between 42,000 and 6,000 years ago, 90% of mammoth habitat disappeared. The vast grasslands in the north have now been replaced by permafrost, taiga forests, and mossy tundra. These habitats and their vegetation could not support mammoths. There may be pockets of tundra-like grasslands around the world that could be considered suitable habitats for mammoths, although some of these are huge open areas like the Great Plains in North America or the Russian tundra stretching over 4,000 miles. They would unlikely provide the right sort of vegetation to feed these giants. This leads us to consider the diet of the mammoths. Mammoths were strict herbivores like today's elephants. From looking at fossilized teeth and feces, scientists have been able to determine their diet. They have also been able to extract preserved intestinal content from frozen mammoth remains in the Arctic permafrost. The Columbian mammoth ate cactus leaves, trees, and shrubs. This mammoth arose in Central and South America about one million years ago and was bigger and less hairy than the woolly mammoth. The Mongochian mammoth fed predominantly on grasses and sedges with supplementation of dwarf birch and larch twigs and a variety of herbs and mosses. The Eurasian mammoths fed on forbs, which are flowering herbaceous plants. These contained higher protein than other plants. 
The mammoths foraged for their food underneath the snow and ice. They fed on vegetation that was killed off by the winter frost, uncovering it with their tusks and feet. As the climate shifted towards the end of the last ice age, warmer and wetter conditions favored the less nutritious grasses and woody shrubs. The vegetation of the Arctic tundra changed, and woolly mammoths struggled to adapt to less protein-dense foliage. This change in vegetation could have led to the woolly mammoth's extinction, but there were other factors at play. Not only did the mammoth struggle to find enough to eat, but there was a new predator on the block. Modern-day humans were expanding their range dramatically. If we look at the competition and the threats faced by mammoths during the Pleistocene, many of the same threats still exist today. Whilst the changing climate caused a significant shift in the vegetation available in the mammoth's habitat, early humans are likely to have also contributed to the mammoth's demise. It is unclear how frequently early humans hunted and killed mammoths. Neanderthals were perhaps more successful at hunting these giant beasts. Judging by the evidence scientists have uncovered, both Neanderthals and early humans consumed mammoth meat, and the bones and tusks were used for tools and the construction of buildings. So far, the most accepted reason for the extinction of the mammoths is a combination of climatic and human factors. The majority of mammoths have died out by the end of the Pleistocene or early Holocene. Other threats include predation by some of the Pleistocene's most fearsome meat-eaters. Young mammoths were preyed upon by some of the large predators of the era. Saber-toothed cats, cave lions, dire wolves, and cave bears would have hunted mammoths, especially the young and ill. Mammoths would have protected themselves with their tusks and come together as a herd when under attack. It is thought that they had a hierarchical social structure, like today's elephants, with a lead matriarch. Today, predators in the northern hemisphere include tigers, bears, and wolves. Some of these species are smaller than their prehistoric ancestors and would therefore pose less of a threat to a fully grown mammoth. However, those species that participate in cooperative hunting, like wolves, may be able to hunt down and tire down an adult mammoth or kill young or injured individuals. Fossil evidence suggests that a couple of isolated populations of woolly mammoths survived until as recently as 4,000 years ago. These populations were on St. Paul Island, Alaska, and an Arctic island called Wrangell Island off the northern coast of Russia. These isolated mammoths were safe from predators, but were thought to have died out from inbreeding and a lack of genetic diversity, as well as from the pressures of a changing climate. Today, many species are under threat of extinction from the same pressures. Hunting by humans, encroaching on natural habitats, and the changing climate has seen the extinction of 160 species in the last 10 years. The negative impact of human expansion and encroachment on natural wilderness is a common theme when it comes to the demise of prehistoric and modern-day species. If mammoths were still alive today, their existence, like many other modern-day species, would likely be under threat. In conclusion, we don't believe that mammoths would be able to survive today. They are not adapted to the warmer, wetter climate of the Holocene, and their primary source of vegetation has been lost. They may be able to find pockets of refugia in some of the world's most isolated open landscapes, but it is unclear whether they would be able to survive on the vegetation found in these areas. Scientists have hinted at the possibility of being able to reincarnate the woolly mammoth, using preserved DNA from fossilized remains and filling in the blanks with modern-day elephants. They suggest it may be possible to one day see a real-life mammoth roaming once more. Although this would be an incredible sight, the mammoths have had their time on this Earth. The current Holocene presents a very different environment than that of the Pleistocene. The mammoths would likely struggle to survive, and their reincarnation would purely be for our enjoyment. Perhaps we should put more effort into preserving the species that are currently fighting for survival on this planet we, and so many others, call home. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.